And now here at the Book Fest, we have somebody very special that I'm going to be talking with and who's going to be doing a reading for you, Mr. Danny Trejo. He's had this amazingly prolific career from acting, producing, restaurateur. He's been in so many movies. The first one I remember is From Dusk Till Dawn, because I'm big into scary <laughs> things, and vampires. But you've been in Con Air, Machete, obviously, uh, Den Dead Again in Tombstone, um, Death Race, Inferno, Muppets Most Wanted. I mean, you do all of these movies. I, I, I almost can't list them all. There's just so many. I think everybody knows who you are, Danny. Plus, you're going to be Mr. World in the television adaptation of Neil Gaiman's American Gods. And the reason you're here today is because you've written this amazing book. It's called Trejo's Tacos, Recipes and Stories from L.A. Hello, Mr. Trejo. Welcome. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Fabulous. It's so good to have you here. And let's let's talk a little bit about Trejo's Tacos. Why did, why did you write this book? Well, you know, we opened a restaurant and uh, immediately people started asking me about, oh, how, how do you cook? How do you, and, and uh, you know, uh, it's, it's hard to tell somebody, give somebody a recipe from a restaurant. Because, okay, well, you put 14 pounds of, you know, <laughs> you, know you gotta like break it all down, but everybody kept on. So I talked to Ash and uh, and uh, Jeff, you know, my two partners, and I was saying, you know, I've been looking over cookbooks and they're boring, they're boring. You know, it's like, you know, page four uh, recipe, page six recipe. Page, and I said, you know, let's do a, let's do a book that's, that's a story more than just a recipe book, you know? And, and they said, uh, well, you're LA. They, Ash jokingly said, well, you're Mr. LA. So I said, hey, let's, that's it. That's, you know, let's take them through Los Angeles with food. And so that's how we started getting the cool. First, we had to get the chefs to break everything down to, you know, to portions instead of, you know, pounds. And and uh, and this is what we came up with. I really was, was happy with it because it was kind of a trip through L.A. with food and 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 and. Uh, Los Angeles is the most eclectic place in the world. You know, we have, you can go two blocks and be in a different country almost, you know what I mean? And then go two more blocks and be in another different country because you've got all these little, little places that, that pockets of, of, uh, of, of, we call, we call them barrios, but you know, neighborhoods. That yeah. are, and uh, that's one thing I love about LA, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you and I are both, we both are in the Valley, and we both love the Valley in Los Angeles. And that's one of the things I really dig about the Valley. If I want good Indian food, yeah. I know where to go. And it is, it's just a few blocks that way. And the good Mexican food, obviously, Trejo's Tacos that way. And, but Italian, anything you could want is just at our fingertips here. It's amazing. That was, that was the one thing that I loved about Los Angeles, like four o'clock in the morning, if you're coming home, you're hungry, and it's like you stop at an all night diner or a stop at a an all night taco or you know whatever you. Know, and it's like that's that's L.A. You know that's Los Angeles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for people who don't know, because yeah, we're in L.A., but for people listening from halfway around the world, just tell us a little bit what what does Trejo's Tacos have to offer? Tell us about the restaurants. Well, what, what we tried to do because the the business that I'm in, it's like uh, at uh. We wrap a show, and then there's like 10 people that want to go out to dinner and celebrate. But inevitably, three of the people, well, like, you know, let's, no, no, I'll have a salad. Because we're vegan, or, you know, and, and, and well, like, I mean, I, I have to be gluten-free. You know, because L.A. is so, so diverse. And so when we opened Trail of Tacos, I said, you know what, wait a minute. Man, let's do vegan and vegetarian. And then I work with autistic children, and doctors have told me that, our kids with autism don't do well with um, with gluten, so mm. a gluten free menu. And then if you go into my restaurants at like five and six o'clock, you'll see families, and 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 each one of them will have a special needs child because mama don't have to cook three different meals, you know. And tacos are you put anything in a taco. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It's really great that you do that. Um, a friend of mine, Jenna Bush, and actually, I think you might know Jenna Bush. She said that she interviewed you a few times. I'm familiar. Yeah, she, she was commenting about the wonderful vegan recipes that you have and how much she loves it. So so tell us, what what, what is, do you have a favorite recipe in the book? Well, you know, carne asada tacos I love. I I, I love tacos. I grew up on them, but but uh, they uh, don't tell anybody, okay, but the jack fruit is like so good. But don't, don't tell anybody I eat it. Jack fruit. <laughs> <laughs> But and then we have a cauliflower taco that was actually the number one recipe in Los Angeles for about two years, you know, just because everybody likes tacos. And then we had a, a glazed on, on the on the cauliflower and it was delicious. They uh the chefs always like try stuff out, then they'll hear daddy eat this, you know. <laughs> so then they'll put it on the menu. That's great, that's great. I know too that your mother was a big inspiration and influence on you. My mom was such a great cook, and I thought it was only Latino families, but it's any family that's living from check to check, they uh, they they have these elaborate meals at the first of the the first of the month, right? And then by the time it gets to like the twenty fourth and the twenty fifth of the month, my mom used to have to like uh, how do you say it? Invent stuff. Like, Mom, what is it? It's called out of the cupboard. Just eat it. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? It's it's done. You never mind. It's done healthy, you know. And she would just mix stuff, and they would come out. You know, like wow. You know, I think actually, I think she invented like macaroni and cheese and stuff. You know, but she would macaroni and cheese with chicken, or you know, just just different stuff, and it was delicious. And we would have quesadillas. But, you know, we have carne asada in them or, or, or chicken quesadillas or, you know, just whatever, you know. No. Oh, and, that's excellent. <laughs> and so we got that in our restaurant. You can order anything in a quesadilla, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. We had this little kid that I want, he wanted a quesadilla, but he wanted ice cream in it. <laughs> and uh, uh, I said, look, how about I put ice cream on the side? <laughs> 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 because really it's like in my restaurant, if you ask for something, they'll make it, you know, and that's what I love. I, 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 I told my staff, you know, I, I want people to feel like they're, they're in their living, in their kitchen, in their home. You know, it's like you come in and everybody's like, everybody has to say, Hey, hello. You know, when you, when you uh, come in, I used to, uh, I used to live by the sushi bar in Venice when I was living in Venice. And uh, every time, uh, you would walk in, all the cooks would yell, you know, uh, uh, Banza, you know, somebody would yell something, you know what I mean? And uh, and I, I love that. It would just make everybody, I didn't know they were drunk. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> they were taking shots of sake. But I love that. I love the minute you walk in, people saying hello to you. And so that's what I asked my staff immediately. Somebody walks through the door, hi, how are you? Come on in. You know, and, and uh, and then you know now it's a it's a little harder because it's only takeout and uh, only <laughs> delivery. But we have a some you know some seating you know, and so we do some outside seating. But we're doing really well with the uh, with um, with the delivery and the the takeout, and also we uh, we got a contract with a place called Gold Belly, which sends food all over the United States. So we've been sending food to Texas, you know, uh, parties in New York. And and so that's doing good. And then uh, before the pandemic, I got a contract with uh, Live Nations and we were doing all their concerts. So as soon as we're over this, we'll open that again. And what's cool is I get to go to concert. And I started a record label. I started a record label, so I told Live Nation, hey, the minute this opens up, I want a contract. I want a, a great concert that you got it. So I got some artists that are going to uh, gonna do a concert for Live Nation. That is so cool. And that's the cool thing about you too is you're a businessman. You're combining different things in different creative ways. And that's just awesome. You know, Desiree, everything good that has happened to me has happened as a direct result of helping someone else. Everything. That's how I got into the rest of the business. Really, I didn't plan on 
opening a restaurant. I, I, I really, I don't know, I know nothing about opening a restaurant. Yeah, you know, like I know food, but I don't know about. And so, I did a, a low budget movie for a director, a name uh, Craig Moss, beautiful guy. I loved him, but but uh, I had a chance to do a, a money job over here, and this this little movie, and. Uh, my agent, Gloria, listen to your agents. Okay, my agent, Gloria, Danny, I think this is going to be good. Wait a minute. Are you money over here, hon? You know, we go for money and but no, no, Jim, please. So she, anyway, she taught me to do this little silly movie called Badass. <laughs> Turned into a trilogy, right? I made five times the money. But I, I met the producer. His name was Ash Shaw. And he saw that I like good food. I, I only process food. I eat, you know, good food. And he says, Danny, why don't you open a restaurant? Jokingly, me and my mom, right? I said, Trails Tacos. So we did badass. We did badasses. Then we did badass on the bayou with Danny Glover. And we uh, opened. He brought me a business plan. And the business plan, I opened it and... and it didn't have killings in the first page, so I said, "Okay, like a script." So I gave it to Gloria, and she said, not a, "Not a bad idea." So if I wouldn't have done that movie, I wouldn't have listened to my agent. I wouldn't be in the in the in the restaurant business. You know, I would have missed the chance. And uh, so you just you know listen to your agent smartly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is. I, I and Gloria helped set this up. So I agree. Gloria is fabulous. And it, it's just so true. Sometimes you do things because you, it just feels right. And those are the things that lead to wonderful opportunities like you have with Trey Host. Everything, everything good that has happened to me has happened as a direct result of helping someone else. Everything. I helped this uh, uh, mom that lived in a battered woman's shelter. Her dad, her daughter wanted to be a singer. So I started a record, just, okay, let's do it. So now we drop one album called Chicano Soul Shop. Now we're dropping another one called Trejo's Soul Classics. And you know, we got some great art, Baby Bash, uh, Chiki Rivera. We got Trish Toledo. We got Tara New, and we got Diana Gonzalez, who's Twixie and bang, you know, so we're doing, I, I like that. I like the res record business, you know. Oh, that's fantastic. I need to listen to some of that. Yeah. Look up a fighter. Look up a boxer named Senise Estrada. Okay. I sponsored her in this fight. She was going to Mexico. They needed some funding. So I sponsored her. She wore my logo on her shorts. She won the WBC championship flyweight of the world. And then on the Canelo undercard, she won uh, the WBA champion of the world. She's 108 pounds. Boxing gloves weigh more than her. And she's a an amazing story where her dad got out of uh, college <laughs> institution. Uh, he um, started training the boys and she was only eight years old. She kept bothering because they had to take her to the gym. She kept bothering. I want to fight. I want to fight. I want to fight. No, it's for the boys. It's for the men. It's for the men. And she bugged him enough. Finally, he got a, an 11 year old kid and said, "Hey, look, I don't want you to hurt her, but I want to. I want to make sure she doesn't want to fight." You know, so they put her in with this kid. She attacked him, beat that. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't know how to box. But fighting, it, you have a little spirit in you that says, "No, no, 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 no. You're not going to push me." You're in. And she had that. She had him on the ground, beating him. Wait a minute. So they pulled him off this kid and. The boy's dad, I think we better show her how to fight. And then she's the WBA and the WBC champion of the world right now. That is such an amazing story. <laughs> and I, I love it because we were in Mexico and she took off her robe and had that that picture, this picture on her on her shorts. Everybody started screaming, Trejo, Trejo. No, I'm not fighting, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> It was like, it was so much. She's beautiful, man. And then my singers are great. So life is, you know, life is good. But again, everything good that has happened to me has happened as a direct result of help someone else. 
And I think that's why you're an inspiration and so many people look up to you because that's that's just in your nature. So why don't you, I think you have a little bit that you're going to read for I us. Do. I do. This is the cookbook. Oh, wait, let me take this off. <laughs> I love the sticky notes on there. <laughs> My agents, you I'm, there's no way I can make a mistake about anything. I got <laughs> sticky notes. Here, that's in the morning. <laughs> okay, here we go. <clears throat> I'll leave that there because that's important. Okay, here. This is number one fan. And, uh, okay. In 2019, my Rams made the Super Bowl. Did I say mine? I meant ours. The Rams are a true Los Angeles institution. Even though the Rams have been back even though the Rams have been back from St. Louis for only three years, I've been a fan since 1950, before they moved away. Before my family moved to Pacoima, we lived in Echo Park. There uh, was still a streetcar system snaking all over town. My cousin and I would hop on a streetcar and take it down to the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum an hour or so before kickoff, back then security wasn't was pretty lax. We had we hid in the bathroom and would wait for a big rush of ticket holders before sneaking in with them. Going to watch the Rams and my beloved Dodgers was one of my all-time favorite things to do as a kid. And now when I look back, I see that it was a survival skill and uh, escape from school, from juvenile hall, from every everything. You were there rooting for your team with what felt like everybody else in the city. And the feeling was indescribable. I was just swallowed up in the vortex of energy and nothing mattered more than what was happening that moment. I'm still a fourth, I'm still a sports fan, maybe even more than I was back then. When I watched the Dodgers stadium being built, when the Dodgers were playing uh, the Red Sox in the 2018 World Series, one of the games was in the 12th inning and people began to leave. And I screamed at them and told them to all sit down. By the 15th inning, I was beginning to regret it because now there was no way I could leave. The Dodgers ended up winning in the 18th inning in the longest game in the World Series history. I'd like to think I did my part to help them get there. Now I get to do more than just cheer from the stands. I get to use my restaurants to support the team and feed the fans. When the Dodgers were in the World Series, we put baseball-shaped donuts on the menu. And when the Rams were in the Super Bowl, we had football-shaped donuts in the team's colors. I've literally fed the Dodgers and the Rams by taking the Trejo's truck take a taco truck to the teams where they were training. And let me tell you, I've never in my life seen anybody eat more tacos than the Rams. In 2019, when the Rams played the Patriots at the Super Bowl, we packed a Trejo's taco truck outside the stadium in Atlanta and gave out free tacos to anyone who wanted to stand in line. And yes, we let the Patriots fan eat too. I was there wearing my Rams jersey, handing out tacos and taking pictures with fans. When I saw fans from LA wearing Trejo Tacos t-shirts in the crowd, it was like they were using our logo as a way to show their LA pride. Now I was blown away and so proud. When I was at the Super Bowl, I felt the same amazing energy I had felt 60 years earlier. I couldn't help 
but think of my dad and the jersey and the helmet he bought me for uh, get my glasses out of out of my room uh, uh, and helmet he bought me uh, for when I was just a kid. I was so proud to wear Norm Van Brockle's number eleven jersey. I uh, wondered what Dad would think of me and the Rams now. A sign on the truck we took to the Super Bowl in Atlanta read, feel the love. And that's kind of what it's all about. Last year, my cousin had just gotten out of prison and we took him to a Dodger game. He'd done 38 years and he secretly was holding back, trying not to cry. He looked at me and said, that he couldn't believe it. I'm in a Dodgers stadium home game. Sports was kind of about getting out of everything, whether you were going through whatever was happening when you were sitting in the Coliseum screaming for the Rams or just being a at Dodger Stadium with all the energy around you. There was nothing else going on. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful thing back then, and it's an even more beautiful thing now that I get to use sports to support my friends, my family and teams. And believe me, when the Rams are training next year, I'll have our truck out there to feed them. It was kind of hard to do that this year because of the the you know pandemic and stuff. But you know, like our restaurants, uh, we, what I'm trying to do right now is take some tacos up to LeBron James' house, and because he has Taco Tuesday, and I want to take a bunch of tacos up there and some go, hey. Come eat some real tacos. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get a hold of LeBron James for you and say, hey, let's make this happen. <laughs> yeah, I think Larry, one of our publicists, is trying to put that together. But uh, I would love to do that with LeBron. He's so cool. Well, if LeBron James is listening, you heard it here. Make sure hey, you get a hold. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I got another little part I'll read, okay? Please do. Driving around Los Angeles and looking at the strip malls, you might get the impression that the city's major food groups are tacos, burgers, and donuts. There are 700 donut shops in L.A., which is over three times as many as in New York, and I'm proud to count Trejo's coffee and donuts as part of what is Agrily, the donut capital of the world. <laughs> uh, when you're competing with 700 donut shops, you need to stand out. When we opened our store on the corner of Highland Avenue and Santa Monica Boulevard in Hollywood, in a space that used to house an old donut time, we could have tried to put a big oversized statue of a donut on our roof, but zoning had gotten a lot tougher uh, back <laughs> than back in the 50s. It had gotten a lot uh, when oversized food on the roof of a restaurant was a thing. So we had a br bright idea literally to paint the side of our donut shop the color pink and the graffiti artist, man, one painted a 10 foot high picture of my face on it. Up until that point, pink was not a color typically associated with me, but I'm getting used to it. You might notice that most of the boxes that donuts come in in Los Angeles are colored pink, like so many LA traditions. There's a great immigrant immigrant story behind it. It turns out a Cambodian refugee named Ted Nigo 
Nagoy uh, went through the Winchell's Donut Management Training Program and began a successful donut shop operator on his own <clears throat> with multiple locations throughout Los Angeles area. Over the years, he sponsored numerous Cambodian immigrants who now own 80% of the donut shops in LA. They eventually started using the pink boxes and uh, because they were more affordable than uh, the traditional white boxes. <clears throat> and now pink is a standard color for uh, donut boxes throughout LA. When, who would have thought that a Cambodian immigrant could make a Mexican tough guy like the color pink? It's stories like these that make me love the city of Los Angeles. Thank you, Mr. Nagoy. Donuts are a little like a taco in that you can do anything you want with them in terms of ingredients. If a chef, LA homeboy Roy Choi, can put Korean this is a Korean bowl lagoi and kimchi in a, in a tortilla and become famous. And we can turn falafel and chicken tiki, tiki, marcella into a taco and people keep ordering them. Then why the hell can't we put ingredients like chili and cheese and hot sauce inside a donut or spread a margarita inspired tequila, lime and salt glaze on one. Like with a taco, it's the same for donuts. There are no rules as long as it's delicious. The team at the donut shop are what I call, or what I like to think of as artists whose medium isn't paint, but sugar. Every day they come up with an original daily special, sometimes riffling out on the season, on the season holiday or sporting event like the playoffs. We've done Dodger, Rams, and Lakers donuts. We done old-fashioned pumpkin spice flavored donuts in the fall, heart-shaped donuts for Valentine's Day, passion fruit glaze, one of the winners, and malted pastry cream-filled donut with chocolate glaze and buttercream frosting, just because. And we've got our vegan friends covered too, because I see no reason why a vegan shouldn't be able to come in, buy, and get a mixed donut. The first food I ate out of prison wasn't a taco. It was a cookie. My mom and dad barely let me back into the house. And I did my first four and a half years. I was... Uh, convicted of bunco sales, which is selling a substance in lieu of narcotics. I was selling sugar even, even back then. When I showed up at my mom's, they let me into the house, but they wouldn't look at me. They wouldn't talk to me. My dad went back to reading the paper. My mom went into the kitchen. I sat in my room. Nothing had changed. And then I smelled something I hadn't smelled in over four years. I, you've got to remember a prison smell like a lot of things and not many of them are good. When I smelled, what I smelled was sweet and buttery. My mom was cooking sugar cookies. Right then I knew everything was gonna be all right. Gee, I hope you like that. <laughs>
That was amazing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, uh, you know what? It's like, that's kind of what the book's about. It's kind of a story that, that just goes along with my life and, and, uh, God, I'll never forget my mom's sugar cooking. My mom started watering when I started. But I, I uh, sugar has been a big part of my life. <laughs> and I love that saying, there are no rules as no. long as it's delicious. Those are words to live by right there. That was, that was my mom's. It's like, never mind, it's delicious, eat it. And, and it worked, you know. So uh, I... Uh, I think you know that uh, uh, that's where that's where the the food came from. You know, she made great food, but the problem was that Mexican food. We have the highest amount of obesity in Latino communities, so I wanted to do food that was delicious but healthy. So what we did was get like my mom's recipe and take. The lard, manteca, take the manteca out and, and figure out ways to get the same taste, but different ingredients. And that is so important. And that's the great thing about Mexican food, because so many of the base ingredient ingredients are healthy. Yeah. Vegetables yeah. and meat, they're all whole foods. Yeah. And so, like I said, tacos are gluten free. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Can you hold up the book cover for us again so everybody can see that beautiful cover? There you go. Trejo's Tacos. Stories and recipes from, or recipes and stories from LA. Yeah. I love it. I love the stories in there, the way you've interwoven the history. You know, you're talking about the immigrants. And you're right. There's so many great mashups of restaurants in yeah. LA. That's one of the things that we have. Yeah. You, can, you know, you can go to a sushi bar here, a Mexican restaurant here, and a Thai or you know, restaurant. You know, so it's like the, the food is is un anywhere. You, anything you want. Doesn't matter. Exactly. Exactly. There's a restaurant we order from a lot and they have fish and chips and sushi and Mexican food. Yeah. All together. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, Mr. Trejo, thank you so much for being here. Can you tell people anything that you've got coming up next? Anything that they should look forward to? I'm doing Mr. I was Mr. World in uh, American Gods. And uh, that's coming out season three. And then I did SpongeBob SquarePants. A funny story is I was at the Super Bowl and uh, Snoop Dogg called me up. He goes, Danny, come here. Come here. He was performing. He called me up on stage. I go, what's up, Snoop? He goes, is this a hoot? Two of the oldest gangsters in Los Angeles, and we're in SpongeBob SquarePants. You know what I mean? I also started doing a... a a video game called Animal Crossing, and uh, it's really uh, it kind of went viral. And uh, I didn't know that many people play that. And one of the autistic kids that I worked with, he kept bugging me about, "You got to do this. You got to do this. This is good. This is good." And uh, it just, you know, wasn't uh, it wasn't my kind of uh, video game. And so I finally, my son came over. Hey, Dan, you okay? So we did it. You know. And uh, bam, it just went by Danny Trejo plays Animal Crossing. <laughs> I, got, I got the cutest <laughs> He's a, and so the creator of Animal Crossing is trying to go to Nickelodeon with a cartoon about me. You know, so. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that needs to be a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And again, from Animal Crossing, video games, to boxing, to music, a record label, Live Nation, Trey Hills Tacos, the book, all the films, the TV shows. And yes, I just got to say, Mr. World. Oh, my God. I can't wait to see that because I'm such a, a fan of Neil Gaiman. I'm also on a cartoon called Big City Green. Uh, what do I play? I play Valdez or I forget who I play. But uh, anyway, I'm the I'm uh, the bodyguard. I'm, so it's like, you know, and I love doing that stuff. I, I, I did a, I remember when I first did it, I did a, oh, Hank Hill. Was it Hank Hill? What, what, King of the Hill. And I was, you know, I'm Hank Hill's best friend. He's my best friend. And so, and I worked for Strickland Prope. Anyway, I did this and it was like amazing. I, 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 
you can show up in pajamas. It doesn't matter. You, you know, just just show up in shorts. It's, it's, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's great too. all the work that you do with young people. Do you have any special message or anything that you want to say to young people, especially now when they're under lockdown and things can be a little bit, you know, stressful? Get projects, make yourselves little projects that you want to do around the house, around you know, your room, whatever, little projects, whatever they are. But for me, I would rather shoot for the moon and miss the name for the gutter and make it. Words to live by. I really like that. And pick up a copy of Trejo's Tacos, Recipes and Stories from LA, and start cooking. There you go. Danny Trejo, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. God bless you, dear. God bless you, Desiree. Thank you.